Okay, so I think we can start. It's a great pleasure for us to have today Francois Mel as a speaker. So Francois doesn't need much of an introduction. He's one of the world experts in partial differential equations. He uh, graduated from the Ecole Normale Supérieure in Paris. And uh, after, that, after that, he had a very brilliant career. Uh, he was also a fellow of the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation and um, highly cited researcher. And uh, he's now director of the uh, lab in uh, Marseille. And so I think uh, uh, we, all, uh, we are all uh, enthusiastic of uh, having Francois here today. He will talk about symmetry properties for the Euler equations and semi-linear elliptic equations. Thanks a lot. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Enrico, for the, for the nice introduction and for the kind uh, invitation. It's my great pleasure to, to give a talk uh, in, uh, in this uh, Asia-Pacific uh, Analysis and PDE seminar. So I, I, for, for, for me, it will be my first time giving a talk at 7 a.m., so I hope everything will uh, run well. So uh, I'm going to um, speak about some joint work with uh, Nicolai Nadirajvili about some links between the Euler equations and some Liouville type results uh, for uh, semilinear elliptic equations. So I will focus today on um, the steady Euler equations. So that means for an inviscid fluid with the uh, incompressibility condition. So these equations are first order equations for the velocity field V. And there is a pressure P. So, and, and the field is assumed to be uh, divergence free in domain omega. And we assume um, C2, we assume C2 uh, conditions, C2 smoothness for the field which seems a little bit uh, too strong because uh, this equation is only a first order equation. But we will see that this uh, assumption plays a role at somewhere uh, in the proof. And uh, so the, the question I'm going to address today is the following one. So how does the flow inherit the geometry of the domain? And we will consider two types of domains Circular domains would, would be the first type. And in that case, the question is, uh, in a circular domain, uh, can we get conditions for a flow to be a circular flow? I will uh, write precisely uh, what it means later. And in parallel domain, uh, the question is, uh, can one find conditions for the flow to be a parallel flow? But today I will uh, uh, mainly focus on the on, on the first uh, question, the question of uh, circular domains. I will briefly mention in, in the last minutes of the talk, uh, the case of the whole plane Rn, which is a parallel domain. And, uh, and I will um, state some results in dimension two. And we will see that uh, so if I have time in dimension three, um, one cannot get exactly the same uh, results. Uh, one cannot generalize them in dimension three and higher. Okay, so the first uh, situation is the following. So I consider uh, an annulus, so um, smooth annulus, which is uh, a domain in R2 between uh, two uh, concentric cycles. Um, so uh, let's say, which, which are centered at the, at the origin. And um, so with the radius A and B. So here in this situation, A and B are positive real numbers and A is less than B. So omega AB is the, the open annulus between uh, the two cycles. So this open annulus uh, has a, a boundary which is uh, made of two connected components. So the inner cycle and the outer cycle. And uh, throughout the, the talk, I'm going to use the, these notations. So ER will be the, the radial vector and uh, E theta will be the perpendicular vector. So the tangential vector E theta. 
Okay. And the, the first result is uh, the following one. So we always assume that the flow satisfies uh, tangential boundary conditions. So in other words, that the radial component of the flow is uh, zero on the two connected components of the boundary of the domain. Okay, and uh, so, so which means that on the boundary, the vector V is parallel to the vector E theta at each point. And we further assume that uh, the flow has no uh, stagnation point in the closed annulus. So the norm of V is strictly positive in the closed annulus. So there is no stagnation point in the domain nor uh, on the boundary. And then the conclusion is that the flow is a circular flow, which means that uh, the flow is at each point, it is parallel to the vector E theta. And because of the incompressibility condition, uh, then the flow is actually, uh, so the, 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 the magnitude of the flow only depends on the radial, um, on, on, on the norm of X. So the flow V can be written as a function capital V of the, of the Euclidean norm of X times the vector E theta. So, so this means in other words um, that the streamlines of, um, of the flow, which are the curves parameterized by these families, this family of equations. So the streamlines, the so in other words, the trajectories of the flow are concentric cycles. So any streamline, so this is the domain and any streamline is a concentric cycle. So this is, a, so in green, this is a streamline of the flow. And the two connected components of the boundary are also streamlines uh, of the flow. Okay, so the flow is uh, like that at each point, the flow is parallel to the vector E theta at each point. Okay, so an equivalent formulation of this result is to say that um, any non-circular flow must have uh, a stagnation point in the closed annulus. And actually for, 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 for the result to hold, we can slightly relax the, the assumption of having no stagnation point in the closed annulus. Uh, in this sense, so we can, it is sufficient to, to assume that the set of stagnation points is properly included in one of the connected components of the boundary. So what, what I mean by properly included means um, included and not equal to. But, but even so, so with this assumption, it, it turns out eventually that uh, since, the, since, since the, the, the conclusion is the same, it follows then that, uh, that the flow has no stagnation point in the closed annulus. Okay. Okay, so this is the, the first main uh, theorem. So I would like to comment uh, this uh, result and especially the, 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 the assumption. And then I would like to, to, uh, to do the, to the scheme of uh, the proof. So first of all, I would like to say that uh, without uh, the assumption that the flow has no stagnation point in the closed annulus, the conclusion does not hold uh, in general. So it's quite easy to, to construct families of uh, flows um, which solve the um, incompressible Euler equations. So how do, to do so? So we consider any uh, classical solution, any classical function u solving uh, this semilinear elliptic equation in the domain omega AB. Let's say classical up to, up to the boundary, so at, of class C2 up to the boundary. And assume that this, uh, so for, for, for a function f, let's say, which is um, at least continuous. And, and um, 
assume let us assume that u is constant on the two connected components of um, of the boundary so u is constant on the inner cycle and u is also constant on the outer cycle and then then we define v to be the orthogonal gradient of u so the orthogonal gradient of u is uh, minus the derivative of u with respect to the component to the variable x2 um, and then the second component is the derivative of u with respect to the variable x1. So, so this uh, flow v, which is the orthogonal gradient of u, then satisfies the other equations with uh, the incompressibility condition. So the incompressibility condition is obvious by definition, and it also satisfies so the other equation. And for a pressure p, which is explicitly given uh, like that, so. And the function capital F uh, has derivative equal to F. So the pressure P is a unique uh, defined up to an additive constant, of course. Okay, so, so now, so once we have this uh, general construction, now we can say that if you, uh, so, so we can say that the critical points of U are the stagnation points of V. So in other words, if U has critical points, then V has stagnation points. And also furthermore, if u is not radial, then v is not a circular flow. Okay, so, so, so therefore it's easy con to construct non-circular flows with stagnation points. So for instance, consider this, um, this equation, so which is um, an eigenvalue problem. Uh, so we, so, the, so, the, so the, the, we consider the operator, so in dimension one, so minus, phi double prime minus r minus one phi prime plus r minus two phi. So this is the Laplace operator, so minus Laplace operator in radial coordinates for radial functions plus r minus two times phi. So this operator, we consider this operator with Dirichlet uh, boundary conditions and it has a principal uh, eigenfunction and principal eigenvalue. And the principal uh, eigenfunction is characterized by the fact that it has a sign in the open interval AB. And therefore, the, so it is unique to multiplication and the principal eigen uh, function lambda is unique. Okay, and then once we have this function phi, we, we can define U of X, which is phi of R times cosine theta. So because of this cosine theta and the R minus two square uh, coefficient in the equation, it, it turns out that the function U satisfies this uh, uh, Helmholtz equation, Laplace U plus lambda U equals zero. So this uh, eigenvalue problem. And this function U has six uh, critical points, four, so two on the inner cycle, two on the outer cycle, and two in the open annulus. And this, and therefore the function V, which is the orthogonal gradient of U is a non-circular flow with the six uh, stagnation points. Okay. So, uh, but I also would like to say that um, that the condition that the flow has no stagnation points in the closed annulus is obviously not equivalent to being a, cir a uh, circular flow. So, for instance, there are so th there are immediate uh, circular flows with uh, stagnation points. So, besides uh, the trivial flow, and uh, so so for instance, now we consider this um, eigenvalue problem. So, which is the, the Laplace um, uh, operator for radial for radially symmetric functions? So we consider this uh, eigenvalue problem, and let me call mu the principal um, eigenvalue and phi the principal eigenfunction, which is unique up to multiplication, and which is so characterized by um, constant sign in the open annulus AB in the open interval AB. And then the function u, which is phi of r, satisfies uh, this uh, linear equation, Laplace u plus f of u equals zero. And the set of critical points of u is equal to, uh, to a cycle, which corresponds to, so, so whose radius is the only uh, critical uh, real number of, uh, the, so the critical point of the function phi. So the function phi has only one critical point in the interval a, b. 
Okay, and, and, and this flow uh, V, which is the orthogonal gradient of U, is a circular flow with infinitely many uh, stagnation points. Okay. So, so now I would like to uh, show the scheme, uh, to present the scheme of, uh, of the proof of this uh, first result. Um, the, actually, the, the, the proof of this result is, uh, is quite easy to, to understand, uh, I hope. Um, but, but, um, f uh, and then I will uh, present some um, further results in uh, uh, other situations and um, with um, more complicated uh, assumptions. Uh, so it's, but, 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 uh, but the proofs, all proofs share some uh, common properties which are which I would like to present now uh, and which are quite easy to understand. So, so first of all, um, so, so, so we consider a flow V, so which is a solution of the Euler equations and which is incompressible and which has no stagnation point in the closed annulus. <clears throat> now this function V has uh, a stream function U. So the flow V has a stream function U. So in other words, so there is a, a string function, there is a function u whose orthogonal gradient is equal to v. And this function u is unique up to uh, additive constant. So it exists because, uh, the, because the, the, the flow satisfies a tangential boundary condition on the inner cycle. It's sufficient to, to, to have it on the inner cycle. And this is, so, so, so therefore the, the flow v has a string function u despite the fact that the domain is not uh, simply connected. And furthermore, since uh, the function, since the flow V is tangential on the boundary, then the, 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 the function, the string function U is constant um, on each uh, uh, connected component of the boundary. So in other words, the, there are two constants. Um, so the, 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 the U is constant on the inner cycle and U is constant on the outer cycle. And therefore, up to additive constant, I can assume without loss of generality that u is equal to zero on the outer cycle, and u is equal to some constant c on the inner cycle. Okay. So, in, so in so since v is a tangential, so u so the, the inner cycle and the outer cycle are uh, streamlines of uh, of the flow. So of course, along each streamline of the flow, the function u is therefore constant now. Okay, so, so, so the first uh, uh, step is to show that uh, any streamline gamma intersects any trajectory sigma of uh, the gradient of, of the flow, of, of the stream function. So, okay, so, so the streamlines are parameterized by the by the by the equations. So, c dot is equal to v of c of t, and and the trajectories uh, sigma of the gradient flow are parameterized by the by, by these families of equations. So, sigma dot of t is equal to gradient u of sigma of t. Of course, when they meet, they meet uh, orthogonally. Okay, so now we have the, the following picture. And why do we have this following picture? So, uh, first of all, since, since, the, since the, the, the flow has no stagnation point in the domain, then the, the function u has no critical point in the closed domain. And since, since the function u is constant along each streamline, and, and the streamlines cannot have infinitely many, cannot make infinitely many loops. So each streamline therefore has to be closed and therefore the, it has to surround the origin because the flow, because the, the flow has no stagnation point. So the streamline gamma surrounds the origin. By that, I mean that the connected component, so the connected component of, um, of uh, omega, so omega, the connecting component of um, of the plane uh, minus uh, uh, sorry minus um, cx so cs is the streamline uh, containing the point x so the connected component the, the, the bounded connecting component of uh, r2 minus uh, uh, cx 
contains the origin. So, so the, the, each streamline surrounds the origin. Okay, and uh, okay, and now now we consider. Um, so now let us consider uh, a, tra a trajectory uh, capital sigma of the gradient flow. So let let us start this trajectory here. Let us let us choose any point A on this um, outer cycle, and let us look at the trajectory uh, of the gradient flow starting from A. So. It is defined in uh, either a left or right uh, interval of, uh, of zero. So without loss of generality, we can assume that it is defined at, 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 uh, for, for t positive, small and positive. Uh, so in other words, so we can assume without loss of generality that the gradient of u points inwards at the point A. So, so now this trajectory capital sigma so starts from, from the point A. So it, goes inside uh, inside the, the domain and it cannot go it cannot go back to the it cannot go back to the uh, to the outer cycle because along sigma uh, the function u of sigma uh, of t is increasing because if we differentiate this uh, function, it is just uh, the gradient of u of sigma of t square. So, so this function is strictly monotone along, uh, along the trajectory. And since, since the function u is constant along um, the outer cycle, then this trajectory capital sigma cannot go back to the, uh, it cannot go back to the, uh, uh, to the uh, outer cycle. And it cannot stop somewhere either since the flow is, is smooth and it cannot, uh, it cannot have an infinite length because actually we, the, the function u of sigma of t is as we uh, has a uh, strictly uniformly positive uh, time derivative and derivative with respect to t. And therefore this uh, trajectory uh, and, and u is, is bounded in the closed annulus. So, so therefore this trajectory sigma has to end, uh, sorry, it has to end uh, at the inner cycle, so it's the only possibility, and and therefore by continuity, therefore the each streamline capital uh, gamma has to cross uh, sigma. Okay, so we have this uh, we have this picture now. Okay, uh, oh, and this is uh, the the main step. Um, so, so now, so without loss of generality, we can assume that C is positive because, so as I said, U was, uh, let's say, strictly monotone along the trajectory capital sigma. So we can assume that C is positive up to changing U into minus U and V into minus V. And therefore, since, uh, since uh, each streamline intersects uh, capital sigma and only once, um, so at each point um, of, of the open annulus, um, if we consider the, let me go back here. If we consider any point X here at the, in the inner, uh, in the open annulus. So if we consider the, the streamline capital gamma containing X, so it has to cross the trajectory sigma here at a unique point. And at this point, so this point is necessary an, um, an, a point, uh, it's, it is necessary an, an interior point and since the function u was increasing along capital sigma, th th therefore the, the value of u at this point y is between uh, zero and c, and therefore uh, u of x, which is equal to u of y, is between zero and c. So we have u of x equals u of y, so between zero and c. So u is between uh, zero and c everywhere, in the open annulus, and now uh, now we use the fact that uh, the vorticity, so the, which is the curl of um, of the of the flow, which is a scalar function here in two dimensions, so which is also the Laplace of uh, the stream function. So this vorticity is constant along the streamlines. So this is this is the only place where we use the Euler equations. We have not used them so far. So this is a well-known fact. Uh, also, for, I would like to say, I would like to apologize for the, for the experts, and I know there are, 
of the on the Euler equations because here I'm using some notations u like a solution of the of analytic equation v the flow and uh, we would see that f also there is a function f uh, they, they, they are not the usual uh, notations on the Euler equation so usually the usually the flow is uh, denoted by u and the and the vorticity by omega and also the, the vorticity function by gamma and I'm going to use it f here so I'm sorry for for, for the experts because this is because I come from the from the from the the, the parabolic and elliptic uh, uh, field so that's why I'm using you the, the the solutions of the elliptic equations so we will see so so we will see this elliptic equation coming now so so the vorticity v is constant along the streamlines so in other words along the streamlines so not only u is constant by definition but also the laplace of u and and therefore and since each streamlines intersects uh, a given uh, trajectory capital sigma of uh, the gradient only once so therefore we have a foliation of the of the domain by by the level sets of uh, of u and each level set of u has only one connected component and therefore we can write an equation we can write a functional equation between u and laplace of u and it is sufficient to have this equation along uh, one trajectory capital sigma of uh, the gradient flow so in so what i what i'm what i'm saying that uh, we can define a function f we can define we can define a function f in such a way that we have the equation Laplace of u plus f of u equals zero on, on, on a given uh, trajectory capital sigma of the gradient of u. Once we have this, so, so therefore f is defined uh, this way, is defined this way. And once uh, we have, so, so which is equivalent to say that uh, we have this equation along sigma. And once we have this equation along sigma, we have it. We have it actually everywhere in the domain because uh, because each uh, streamline capital gamma intersects capital sigma, and u and Laplace u are constant along uh, capital gamma. So we have this equation therefore everywhere. So of course uh, uh, it's it's uh, since the, the flow has no stagnation point, it's uh, easy to, to 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 write such an equation locally. But the interest of this construction is that uh, the function f is defined in such a way that this equation holds globally in the domain. We have this global equation in the in the domain, and in in the in the literature on the Euler equation, so this function f, which is a vorticity function, is usually called gamma. So here I'm using f, <laughs> which is the usual notation for the um, elliptic equations. Okay, so now we have this equation in the in the annulus and. And also, let me also point out that the function f is of class C1. f is of class C1. And this is where we use the, the assumption that the flow V was of class C2. So since the function V is of class C2, then the stream function U is um, of class C3. So the Laplace of U, the vorticity is of class C1. And also sigma and theta are also of class C1 by definition. So so therefore the function f by the chain rule is of class c1 so therefore it is at least at least a Lipschitz continuous and now we are going to use um, a result of boyan sirakov so if we consider any function f uh, defined in an in interval 0 c where c is positive and assume that f is Lipschitz continuous and we consider instead of an annulus in uh, dimension two, we can consider any um, ring, let's say uh, in dimension N. So which is between two concentric spheres of radius A and B. And we consider a classical solution U of uh, the same uh, equation, uh, plus U plus F of U equals zero in the, in the domain omega AB. And, U, and we assume that U is between zero and C in omega AB. And we assume that u is equal to zero on the outer sphere and u is equal to c on the inner sphere. Then the conclusion is that u is radially symmetric 
and decreasing here with our assumptions. So it depends only on the norm of X and the function capital U here is uh, strictly decreasing. Decreasing. Okay, and this result uh, is of course uh, very similar to the classical result of uh, Gidas Nirenberg. So classical result of Gidas Nirenberg was for was first for um, uh, solutions of equations in the in in the ball, um, which are positive in the ball and which are zero uh, on the boundary of the ball. Then when f is Lipschitz continuous, then these solutions u are already symmetric and decreasing with respect to the norm of x. So in, 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 an, um, in a ring, um, we can have some monotony, monotonicity in, uh, in a given direction, but uh, between the half of the, um, uh, half of the radius, be, be between a plus b over two and b, but not in the, not, not in the whole uh, domain, because, because actually we have zero on, if we assume that the function u is zero on, uh, on both connected components of the of the omega a b, but here since we have uh, different uh, values uh, uh, on the inner and outer spheres, we can have we can do the moving plane um, the move the moving plane method of Alexandrov, and therefore and then used by Serin and Gidas Nirenberg, we can use these moving plane methods up to the origin, um, and and therefore we can show the symmetry. Of the function u in uh, in with respect to any hyperplane containing the origin, so therefore the function u is radially symmetric. So this is the proof given by Sirakov, and it holds even in for for <clears throat> in a more general framework under more slightly more general assumptions. But here the function f is assumed to be Lipschitz continuous, and because we so this assumption is actually uh, we cannot uh, we cannot uh, somehow relax this assumption. Because we the moving plane method use, uh, uses a comparison principle applied to the difference between a function and its uh, reflection with respect to some hyperplanes, and we use uh, the fact that uh, the function f is which is continuous to apply the maximum principle. So the maxi maximum principle is applied to the difference of the two functions, which satisfies an equation and whose uh, first order coefficient is uh, therefore bounded. So we cannot uh, get rid of this assumption. Okay, so and, and so so we just apply this uh, theorem to conclude uh, that uh, in our case, so the, the function u, the string function u is a uh, radially symmetric, and therefore, the flow v is a circular flow. Okay, so and and therefore the proof is uh, finished. Okay, so now I would like to to comment some further results um, uh, in other situations. So. We can uh, now consider a domain which is an exterior domain, uh, omega a infinity, which is uh, the complement of a disk of radius a. And we still assume that uh, the flow is uh, tangential on the boundary. So now the boundary has only one connected component. And uh, we assume that uh, the flow has no stagnation point in this strong sense. So we assume that the infimum of the norm of V is strictly positive. So no stagnation point in the domain, nor at infinity, in some sense. And we also assume that, uh, we also assume a condition at infinity, which says that the radial component of the flow is somehow small at infinity. So it is a little O of one over norm of X as norm of X goes to infinity. So it is in some sense almost a tangential uh, uh, in uh, on on uh, large uh, cycles at infinity, in some sense. Okay, and then the conclusion is the same. That is, the flow V is a circular flow, so it is parallel to the vector e theta at each point, and uh, it and therefore the, the magnitude only depends on the norm of x, and the function capital V is uh, non-zero. So, so this means that uh, the streamlines are all concentric cycles and that the stream function u, which still exists, uh, uh, is a uh, radially symmetric. So, it is, so this result can be viewed as the previous one, um, as a Liouville type result for the function u. It says the function u is uh, radially symmetric. The stream function is radially symmetric. And here the flow v is not assumed to be bounded um, so for instance, uh, that there are obviously uh, 
some uh, flows uh, uh, which are circular and with uh, no tension point and which are unbounded. Okay, and uh, so, but I would like to say that without, uh, without this condition at infinity, um, the, the conclusion does not hold in general. So let me uh, find one, let me uh, show one counter example. So we consider, a f we cook up a, a function u, a string function u, which is uh, given by this explicit formula. So, and it means uh, that the function u satisfies um, the equation Laplace of u is equal to a constant. So therefore we can take f of, f of s, which is minus this constant eight over a squared. And we define the function v, which is the orthogonal gradient of u, so which is given by this explicit formula. And uh, this function v uh, satisfies the condition that the infimum of its norm is uh, strictly positive. And, and the radial component of the flow, the radial component of the flow is um, explicitly given by this formula. And, there, and actually this uh, formula is not, uh, this is not little o of one over norm of x as norm of x goes to infinity. And this is actually big O of one. It is not, not less than big O of one. So, and, the, and this function V is not a circular flow by definition. So, 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 so this counter example um, shows, shows that this uh, condition at infinity is not, um, uh, we cannot get rid of it in general, but we do not know how optimal it is. We have a counter example for which uh, this radial component is big O of one. So we do not know if there is something bit, so, so we do not know if this um, one over norm of X is optimal or not so far. And um, I would like to say that, so for these examples, the, um, the, 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 the stream, um, all, all streamlines are still uh, surrounding the origin. They are closed curves surrounding the origin, but they are not cycles. And the, and the real oscillations of the far streamlines is a over two. So by that, I mean that if I consider, um, if I consider far swim lines, so the, the, the radial oscillation, so, so the minimum of the radial component and the maximum of the radial component of a far swim line. So the, the difference between capital M and little m is like A over two. So, so these swim lines are uh, between two uh, concentric spheres, but the difference of the radii of the spheres uh, cannot go to zero. So it is, um, it converges to A over two when the, when the streamline goes to infinity. Okay, so um, I think, uh, uh, so the, the, uh, I will present very briefly the, the, the proof. It shares some common features with the previous one. So we can define a swim function u. Uh, we introduce um, the trajectories of the gradient flow, and starting from a point on the on the boundary, and along this trajectory, the function u has to go to infinity up to changing u into minus u. And and therefore, and then by continuation argument, we can show that uh, each streamline intersecting um, the trajectory capital sigma surrounds the origin. And, and, then, and then all streamlines surround the origin because the, the, the streamlines uh, which intersect capital sigma, then the value of u along the streamlines go to infinity when the, when the intersection point goes to infinity. And therefore, since uh, the function u is constant along each streamline, uh, therefore the, each given streamline has to be included into another larger streamline. And therefore each streamline surrounds the origin. And also this implies that uh, each streamline crosses uh, the, the, the trajectory capital sigma. And therefore u is positive uh, in, the, in the domain omega infinity. And we can also show, because of the assumption at infinity, we can show that the, the radial oscillation of the streamline go, 
uh, goes to zero when when this when x goes to infinity and therefore we can also write an equation laplace u plus f of u in uh, in the domain omega infinity for some uh, c1 function f so we define it we define the function f in such a way that this equation is satisfied along uh, trajectory capital sigma and then it is defined everywhere because of the previous observations and then we are led to the previous situation, but not exactly. Because so, so in the previous case, we just applied the, the result of uh, Boyan Sirakov. Here, it's not exactly the same because we do not have, a, let's say, a, a ring. So, uh, because, so we have an inner cycle where the function u is constant, and we have um, large cycles where the function u is almost constant. So, but so, so what we are going to do is to apply, we are still going to apply the method of moving plates of Alexandrov, Serin, and Bidastin, Nirenberg, but we apply in some um, domains where we uh, up to, let's say, up to some epsilon, we, we, we subtract some uh, small, um, uh, small, let's say, um, uh, slab um, around the origin. So we will apply the, this method uh, uh, up to some epsilon in any given direction e. So at the right of the position epsilon in, in any unit vector e. And uh, but we have to satisfy some condition. We have to satisfy that the reflection of the domain is included into the, into the domain, into, the, into the, the connected components of the, of, uh, of, of the complement of the streamlines, uh, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So it's quite technical to apply the to to, to make this uh, work, and, but uh, but it works. And then we pass to the limit when epsilon goes to zero, and by a limiting argument, we we we, sh we can show that the function u is already symmetric. So so this part is uh, quite technical and um, involves some uh, some further argument, which I don't have time to, to present in detail. But okay, I I think uh, so. I would like to say that there are also further results uh, in, punct in punctured disks when we just subtract the origin, always as well as in the punctured plane um, uh, with some conditions at zero and at infinity, but I don't have time to show that. I would like to, to present one uh, serin type free boundary problem. So, so now the situation is a little bit different because we don't know what the domain is. Um, so we take uh, omega, which is a C2, uh, non-empty, simply connected uh, bounding domain of R2. And we have a flow V, which is of class C2 in the omega bar, and uh, which is uh, tangential on the boundary. And we further assume that V is constant along sigma. So it's an, an additional condition. So the norm, sorry, the norm of V is constant. And we assume that V has uh, only one stagnation point uh, in, the, in the closed domain. And therefore, this stagnation point has to be an interior point. Then, up to shift, the domain omega is equal to the, to the ball BR, to the disk BR. And the unique stagnation point is the center of the disk. And furthermore, V is a circular flow. Okay, so here this, um, so, so it's a serine type uh, overdetermined free boundary problem because so we, have, we have an extra condition on, on the boundary. So this uh, condition, this red condition here, which says that the, which says, which implies that the, um, that the stream function U has a constant normal derivative along, along the boundary. And therefore, we have overdetermined uh, boundary conditions for, for the function u. And therefore, we can apply the, the method of serine, so the classical method of serine to, to show that the domain is the ball, so which is based, and this method is based on the moving plane method. But there is a difficulty due to the fact that the, that the function f uh, may not be uh, the function f, uh, which appears here may not be uh, Lipschitz continuous. It may not be Lipschitz, con it cannot, it can, it can be not Lipschitz continuous um, in, the, in the whole range of you. So, the, so there, there are some difficulties, but I don't have time to show that. Uh, maybe if I have one minute, I would like to share one, one uh, completely different result. 
in the whole plane, sorry, in the whole plane, so situation is a little bit different now. The whole plane R2, we take a domain, we take a flow V, which is uh, bounded and which has no extension point in the strong sense. So in this sense, so the flow V is between two uh, positive constants. And then the conclusion is that the flow is a parallel flow. So which means that the flow is parallel to uh, some vector E and the, and the component uh, along the vector E depends on the orthogonal variable by incompressibility. So here the difficulty is that the fact that there is no, there is no boundary, so there is no obvious streamline, so no continuation argument and so on, and the proof is completely different. It, it uses um, uh, some, arg so, 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 some difficult um, uh, estimates on the, on the argument of, of, uh, of the flow. And, and, and the classical result of Moser on, uh, on uh, harmonic type equations. So I think, uh, so I would like to, to stop here and thank you for your attention. Thanks a lot for the beautiful talk. Thank you. Are there any questions? Enrico Shugu has a question. Yes, okay, so please feel free to go. Uh, Shugu, you need to unmute yourself. I gave him permission to speak, but uh, yeah. Professor Shiraki, you can speak. You can formulate your question. Uh, sorry, I, I pressed the wrong button. Okay. Other questions or comments? Uh, uh, so, sorry, I, I, di I didn't hear your, your question, actually, your comment, Professor Shiraki. I think he uh, pushed the wrong button. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> so, yeah, so uh, I have a question. So, in the first theorem, you basically asked that B is uh, C2 up to the boundary of omega. Yeah. It's clear where it comes out from the proof. But do you think that's a kind of necessary condition or uh, it's just a technical thing that you need in the proof? It is, it is a technical thing which is used in the proof. So, so in the proof, we cannot relax too much the assumption, maybe C11, but not too much more. But, uh, but hopefully, the, hopefully the, the result would hold uh, with a uh, weaker some with weaker uh, smoothness like uh, this is just c1 um, which will which would be the the let's say the uh, the, the natural uh, smoothness of course it is known that there are some non smooth uh, solutions but of the other equations but um, c1 would be nice but but as such the proof uh, would not work with just c1 assumption and Thank you. Thank you, Serena. Thanks a lot. Other questions or comments? Enrico, I have a question. Go ahead. Um, could uh, um, Francois explain, give a little bit more details to the proof for the free boundary serene problem? Because there was no time. If you maybe yeah. can say two, three minutes something to this, it yes. would be very interesting. Thank you. So, so, um, since uh, so this is uh, this slide. So since the, the so so 
So now the domain is simply connected here. So we can define a function u, which is a string function u, and without loss of generality, so we can assume that it is zero on the boundary. And um, since since the, um, the so the function u has only one critical point because we assume that the function that the flow v has one stagnation point. So the function u has one critical point, which is therefore the maximum without loss of generality. Okay, and so without loss of generality, u is positive. So um, we so 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 this is the so this is the domain. So sorry, not a ball a priori, but so so. So this is the domain. So it is simply connected. So this is omega. So if we consider so and and there is so there is a unique quit unique um, critical point of view, which is the stagnation point of V. So now if we consider any um, if we consider any uh, trajectory capital sigma of the gradient of U. So starting from a point on the boundary. So this trajectory has to end at the at this uh, stagnation point here. And, and the function u is strictly monotone along a capital sigma. And also we can show that uh, with the same arguments as before, but adapted here to, to this case, we can show that any um, uh, any uh, any streamline, uh, capital gamma, any streamline of the flow has to surround this uh, green point, and therefore it has to cross uh, capital sigma. And, and therefore we can write uh, uh, we can write an equation. Uh, we can write this type of equation in uh, in omega. But but. Um, the function f, so the function f is defined as before. So it is defined, the function f is defined in such a way that this equation Laplace u plus f of u is satisfied along capital sigma. But, but the function f involves, so the Laplace of u uh, applied to, uh, to, 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 um, to sigma of uh, theta minus one of t. So, so but, the, but the function f in general, it is not Lipschitz continuous it, it is continuous, but in general, not Lipschitz continuous uh, at, um, at, at the left uh, neighborhood of, uh, of the maximum of u. And it is, it is possible to construct explicit examples of flows for which this function, vortice C function f, is not Lipschitz continuous up to the, up to the maximum of, uh, of u. And therefore, and therefore, we cannot apply the, the method as such. We cannot apply the method of uh, Serin. We cannot apply Serin's uh, uh, result as such because we don't have this Lipschitz continuity. But what we do is just we apply a modification. Um, we subtract. Uh, we subtract to the domain omega. We subtract small neighborhoods of uh, of uh, of the critical point z of size epsilon. And then, by using the same method, uh, the same moving plane method of uh, as Serin, and we get uh, two possibilities. Uh, either so we, we we reflect the domain with respect to 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 hyper to to a line, either the, the reflection intersects uh, the boundary or inter or intersects uh, let's say the boundary at some opposite point or intersects the boundary orthogonally at some point. So for those who know, and therefore. But we can do that up to some epsilon. So we, we get almost a monotonicity of omega in any direction with respect to any line containing z. And then when we pass to the limit, we, we get the, the, the fact that the domain is uh, radially symmetric. Mm -hmm. so, so, so they are the basic arguments. Mm -hmm. but, but we cannot, uh, but, but we have this technical difficulty here, which we cannot uh, get rid of because uh, it is a, uh, it is a. It, it can appear in general. Mm. Yes. Thank you for your question, Ian. Yeah. Thank you. Other questions or comments? Uh, I have a question. Um, 
So does this analysis with the streamlines and the trage trajectories, can you extend that to a non two dimensional domain in any non trivial way or is there just do, do things just fall apart. Uh, okay, I mean, I guess so, so Yes, yeah, so so in in no, so we cannot extend it uh, in higher dimension. So, so first of all, we don't have uh, a scalar uh, string string function. Right. And also, the vorticity is not uh, in dimension three, so the curl is not a scalar function anymore. And 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 furthermore, there are some counter examples. So, so uh, so I didn't have time, but I have a counter example which is written here, which is counter examples. Um, uh, in a cube, in, in a three-dimensional cube. So, so we in um, so in in two-dimensional uh, strips, we have positive results similar as uh, the ones uh, I showed. But in a three-dimensional cube, these results do not hold. So, if we consider a cube, so it's a so it's a tube here like that. So this is variable x one and x two and x three. Um, are in, a, in, in the unit disk. So we consider this domain omega, which is a tube. And uh, so consider this flow V, uh, which is one minus X3, X2. So uh, this flow V is between two positive constants in the domain, but it is not a parallel flow. And uh, so, 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 so therefore the, um, the, the, the results uh, which says that in a two dimensional strip, the flow would be a, a parallel flow does not hold in dimension three. So I don't have any specific counterexamples in, uh, in flows between two spheres in dimension three, but uh, at least in, in, so in, in a tube, this result does not hold. However, uh, the, the, there might be uh, uh, natural conjectures. So, so for instance, in this uh, in this example, um, the, um, uh, the, um, the 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 projection of the flow uh, in the in uh, on the on the disk in the variable x two and x three is a circular flow. So the 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 x two and x three components of the flow are uh, are circular flow. So we we could say okay maybe the the, the in such a domain, the, the circular, the, the 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 projection of, sorry, the 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 the, the circular, the, the 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 components of the flow in the x two and x two, uh, in the x two and x three variables are is circular. But this would be a possible conjecture. But 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 in general, uh, so so in, to answer your question, in general, the the answer is no in uh, higher dimensions. Thank you. You're welcome. Other questions or comments? So if not, I think we can thank Francois again and uh, meet in the coffee break. Thank you. Thank you. I close the thank session. You. Everybody should have received an email to the copyright. Please join us. Okay.